The following is a production of the Ultimate Fantasy Sports Network. What is going on, everybody? Welcome into the first episode, the pilot episode, if you will, of UFBA Today. Uh, my name is Jet Stryer. I'm going to be your host throughout the basketball season and the off season, And as long as, frankly, they'll keep me as the host. Uh, that's why I'm calling it a pilot. You know, you can never be positive with these things, but I, I feel pretty good. I feel pretty entrenched, uh, especially because I'm part of the league, too. I'm a co-owner of the Metaverse Mambas. Uh, we're currently in the midst of Zion Watch, waiting to see if he will ever return to a basketball court again. But this show's not about me, not about my team. I'll be sure to talk about it plenty. But really, it's about all of you and this awesome league that we are all a part of and keeping everybody up to date with the latest that's going on in the league, all the standings, all the matchups, all the transactions, and uh, really just breaking everything down that makes this league so unique and so fun. So I'm really excited uh, to get going here. we got a great show today to open things up. We've got uh, Sho Ali, the head of Sport for Basketball, coming on, and he's got some big announcements to make. Uh, so that's going to be great. But first... Since we're starting at just past the midseason point in the NBA season, I figured we'd start up with just where everything stands right now. And we're going to just get right into the standings and some things that I've noticed uh, in my you know, spare time about you know, how these standings sort of came into place and the draft picks and where somebody drafted really correlate well with the place that they're in right now. So let's get right into it. Uh, I want to look at the top of the standings for each conference. We're going to start with uh, with conference one here, uh, as you can see on that handy graphic. Uh, we've got the Spitfire Aviators at the top of the heap there, followed by the Big River Ballers, Sharpshooters, the Majesty, Lucky Thirteens, the Arctic Wolves, Crusaders, my own team, the Metaverse Mambas, in eighth. Great Lake Sharks, Cosmos, Night Riders, Slashers, Hyenas, Renegades, and Defenders. Uh, the Spitfire Aviators and the, uh, are off to just an absolutely forward start. Um, 38 and 6 as of, I believe it's today. Um, just really, really impressive, impressive start from them. Uh, and honestly, you know, credit to, credit to a lot of these teams who are, even though the Spitfire Aviators have started off so well, you know, teams aren't just letting them pull away, uh, which, you know, I think that shows that, you know, this is a very competitive league. I think, you know, we can if you're part of the Telegram or the Discord, that's not a surprise to everybody. Anybody. The. The activity in this league is just outrageous. I mean, I can I can wake up and I'll have 400 messages on the Telegram thing. Um, I know we're we're an international league, too, which is really cool. Um, I'm based in Boston. I know we got a lot of Canadian teams. I think we have uh, some Australian teams. So everybody's taking it seriously, and that's what makes a fantasy league really, really good. Let's get into Conference 2 now uh, before I give you my you know, expert observations and opinions uh, about what exactly is going on with the standings. So this is the other conference right now where the Skyhooks uh, are off to, I mean, and just a torrid, un, like, I'm, I mean, this is a Golden State Warriors from a couple of years ago type start. 41 and 3 uh, are the Skyhooks on the season, and that is good for a 932 winning percentage. Thank God the, the league calculates that itself uh, because I cannot do that math, but I, you know, from... Just looking at it, I knew it was going to be a high percentage. 932 is outrageous. You'd be like, okay, Skyhooks, 41-3. and three. They have the one seed locked up, but not so fast because the Midnight Owls are right behind them. They are on their asses. 39-5 and five for the Midnight Owls, good for an 886 winning percentage, just two games behind. So, you know, if I'm the Skyhooks 
And we're going to get all you guys on. Anybody who wants to be on, uh, any GMs, any owners, scouts, whatever, just DM me on Telegram or whatever. We will get you on, uh, whether you have ever been on camera before or not. Don't worry about it. This is just all fun. So we're going to get, you know, dig into your, you know, your team philosophies. Uh, but I, I, I was going to say, you know, credit to the Midnight Owls for for also putting in an incredible team. Maybe they're getting overlooked a little bit because the what, what what's going on in that division, but they shouldn't be. I mean, five losses is just ridiculous, too. So. We've got, I'd say the top four teams in the league right now are, are just really off to incredible starts. Um, um, but, you know, that's what sort of makes fantasy fun is that just because they're hot right now doesn't mean that come playoff time, that's going to be who's crowned champion. Uh, so really, really interesting start to the season. And again, as the season goes on, we're going to get into every team talk about what's gone right, what's gone wrong, what their future plans are, if they're willing to divulge them. And uh, and, and I, I'm excited to get everybody on as guests to be able to tell us, you know, what their experience has been so far in this league and what they're looking forward to going forward. Uh, so just a couple of notes before we bring show on here, because I do want to really talk to him about what he's excited about going on in this league and some big announcements that he has. So I don't want to make him wait too, too long as he listens to me, you know, going on and on about standings. But I did notice a couple things that I thought people might find interesting, uh, especially based off of how our league drafted, where, you know, it wasn't Snake. And uh, so obviously the, the top teams there had massive advantages, uh, depending on you know, what they paid for their franchise, which obviously increased the pot for all of us here. Uh, so the team that had the top pick in every round uh, was the Arctic Wolves. And they are currently in eighth place in the league, sixth in their conference. So take that what you will. If I was drafting first in every round, I would hope I was in first place. I do know that the Arctic Wolves have a lot, a lot, a lot of promising young talent and are set up very, very nicely for the long run here. Um, So I wouldn't be too worried about that. But uh, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm curious to get the the uh, the GMs and the owners onto that team on, see how they feel about starting off in eighth place and sixth in the conference after having the first pick in every round. Again, they might feel perfectly comfortable with where they are, and there's certainly they're right in playoff pole position. Not a problem, but uh, just just a little a little note for you there. Skyhooks had the second pick overall. They are in first place in the league, as I noted, which means they are in first place in their conference. So that directly has correlated, I think, to their success, obviously, having such a high pick in every round, second pick, and they are in first place overall in our league. So that clearly worked out well for them. Good drafting, obviously. Spitfire Aviators, third overall pick and are in third place overall in the league, first in conference. That checks out perfectly right there. Uh, The Bombers, they have the fourth pick. They are currently in 11th place in the league fifth in the conference, similar sort of situation to the Arctic Wolves, very high pick, uh, sort of middle of the pack right now in the, the league, a little bit higher than middle, and fifth in the conference, definitely curious to get their thoughts on that too, and uh, this is probably the most disappointing of those, of, you know, these high pick teams, the Hyenas, they had the fifth overall pick in the league, and they're currently in 26th place uh, in the league, 13th in their conference. Uh, so it's not been a good start at all for the hyenas, especially considering how high they picked. Uh, definitely disappointing. But this is a league that's based on the future and based on a lot of things that can happen. And so just because you're down one day doesn't mean you're going to be down the next day. It's a long, long lifetime in this league. So uh, just because the hyenas picked fifth and spent a lot of money on their team and are 26 now, that doesn't mean we should all point and laugh at them like the animals that they are named after. That's not the right thing to do. We build our fellow owners up and behind their back, we make fun of them, but not never in person, never in person. Uh, so Hyenas, again, fifth pick overall, 26th place in the league, 13th in the conference. Um, and I wanted to point out some teams that I think have done a really, really good job overachieving, not necessarily well, overachieving is not the right word, outpacing their draft position. Um, 
So shout out to these three teams. Uh, and I'm going to do it in the order that I think I'm, in, I'm most impressed by. And since I'm the host, that's really what matters the most. Uh, the Lucky 13s had the 13th overall pick, hence their name. They are in seventh place in the league, fifth in their conference. You get a, you get a midseason trophy for very good GMing and very good drafting Lucky 13s. The Vipers, they had the 18th pick in the draft. They are currently in 10th place in the league, fourth in their conference. Excellent work by the whole Vipers squad. Shout out to you. You get an even bigger trophy. Uh, and the team that's really impressed me the most in terms of where they drafted versus where they are right now, um, and my early candidate for GM of the year, has to go to the Brigade. 28th pick in the draft, and they are currently in ninth place in the league and third in their conference. That is some really, really good work. Now, I know they have Paul George. He's going to be out for a while, so we may see some slip there. But to draft 28th in every round and to be in ninth in the league and third in their conference, that's a really impressive accomplishment that the Brigade should feel really good about. And I don't know if we're doing end of the season awards. Actually, executive decision. We are going to do end of the season awards. I'm going to make them up, and they're going to be fantastic. I will not be ordering any trophies, though, if the uh, if the powers that be of uh, UFFS wants to do that. By all means, I highly encourage it, uh, but I will make up some uh, some titles for the awards, and we will hand them out at the end of the season. But my early pick, again, for GM of the year would be whoever is the GM of the brigade. Very, very good work. Credit to you. I'm proud of you. You should feel proud of you, too. So that's just sort of where the standings are right now. Uh, we're going to obviously take a much more in-depth look at them as the season progresses and we keep doing this show and you keep tuning in and are just, you know, foaming at the mouth to get the latest update on the standings every week. And you can't wait to see this show. Don't worry. We'll get you covered. We'll talk about everybody's team. There will be no team left uncovered. But without further ado, I want to bring in Sho Ali. He is the head of sport for basketball. Uh, he has been, uh, he's a relatively recent addition to the league. And uh, I know he's got some big, exciting announcements he wants to talk about. So, uh, show, can we get show in here? Can you hear me show? I can. Yeah. How's it going, Jet? It's going good. Nice to see you. I see you got a nice collection of hats back there. You got, uh, your Canadian pride, uh, showing proudly. You got some, uh, Raptors stuff, some Blue Jays stuff. I also saw, and sorry if this is, is disrupting your privacy, but I did see a Stormtrooper helmet before the show started, which <laughs> right. I mean... I think that's awesome. I, too, am a huge Star Wars nerd. So we could eventually have this show just completely devolve into talking about what happened on Book of Boba Fett. But we'll start with the league. And uh, so, show what brought you to this league in the first place? Yeah, so uh, joining UFF Sports, I'd been kind of monitoring the, uh, the timelines on UFF and seeing the various... Uh, the, uh, the other sports kind of get off the ground, right? I, w I was a scout for the uh, UFF football side of things and uh, got involved with uh, Andy McNamara, who is uh, the football head of sport. So I kind of got involved that way, got to know Larry Fisher, who is the, uh, the kind of consigliere, I, I like to call him, of the UFF sports world. So yeah, it was, it was a fun project to be a part of. And, uh, you know, I, I love basketball, as everyone in the UFBA does. So it's kind of fun to be able to share that love of basketball with everyone else as well. Yeah, uh, I mean, that's, that's sort of why everybody joins, right? And that's why people put up, you know, thousands of dollars for these teams, because yeah. basketball is really, really fun. This fantasy league makes it much more interesting than obviously the typical basketball league. So, you know, there's a lot of intrigue there. And I think that's why. We have, you know, international reach where we've got teams in the U.S. and got teams in Canada and got teams in Australia. And hopefully at some point we have uh, 30 teams, 30 countries. I think that would be really, really good and competitive and maybe the onus for a possible third world war. I don't know. <laughs> I know, right? I, 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 <laughs> I look forward to the day where we can have teams in Spain and Lithuania. And cause I, feel, I feel like that is... You know, when we talk about like the future of the basketball space, 
in UFF sports, right? I mean, obviously, right now we're looking at the NBA, but uh, college basketball, the NCAA, uh, you know, you look over to Euro League eventually. I'm sure eventually we're going to talk about a Legends League as well, hopefully towards the back half of 2022. Like, there are like basketball, and I know you know this, Jed, and all of our owners know this as well, but basketball is. Dare I say, with soccer, the most global sport out there, and basketball as a game in the real world is growing at such a rapid pace that we can go pretty much anywhere we want, right? So I think there's a lot of exciting times ahead for the sport of basketball and for the UFBA as well. Oh, I, I completely agree. I think uh, you've seen, you know, over the last 15, 20 years, just an incredible rise in the global phenomena of basketball. Uh, you know, we've seen it uh, spring up in virtually every country the nba is so well, well represented internationally and it's not just that there's a lot of international players some of the international players are some of the very best players in the nba um, obviously uh two-time mvp Giannis uh de Kumpo, we got joel Embiid, we got luka Doncic, and that's just scratching the surface uh, of the immense international talent that's in the nba and I think that's only going to continue to grow as far as I'm concerned. And, you know, I do a bunch of these NBA shows and I've said this on them before. The NBA has the most talent it's ever had. And that's only going to be a trend that continues and continues and continues as the NBA becomes more international. Uh, there's just going to be a bigger pool of players. Yeah, exactly. I, I look forward to the day where. We're talking about more number one overall picks coming from elsewhere. Hey, I mean, there's no problem with guys coming from North America by any means, right? That's probably where a lot of the pool will come from for a really long time. But yeah, I do agree. I think we're we're on pace, even maybe as soon as next year, as the 2023 NBA draft approaches. I think we're we're getting onto the point where we might see a number one overall pick from you know from Europe or somewhere, you know, whether it's France or Spain or someone. So I think it's it's really exciting, and uh, you know I, I'm sure the I know the Olympics kind of got disrupted over the last couple of years because of the pandemic, of course. But uh, at the same time, I think those kinds of events can only help the uh, international popularity, international growth of the whole sport. Oh, without a doubt. Um, and you know, like you said, North America is obviously still going to produce a ton of talent. That's not going to slow down anytime soon. But you're going to be seeing more and more talent come out of Africa as the NBA has expanded their reach there. And, you know, Barack Obama has, uh, you know, a hand in, in a league that they just started up in Africa that I think Jay Cole, the rapper, was part of for a couple of days as a player, um, which was kind of cool. So you'll see be, more, be seeing more players out there. Like you said, Europe, China obviously still remains a huge market. I know the NBA is really trying to get into India and tap that huge populace. So. Again, there's sort of no end in sight for the amount of international talent that's going to come into the NBA, and that means more players uh, for everybody to be able to draft and get excited about in our league. Um, and so speaking of the UFBA uh, show, where, where do you see it? So where do you see growth happening in this league? I know you talked about the Legends League. Are there any other sort of opportunities you're excited about in terms of expanding sort of the the overall community of this league? Yeah, so the Legends League is for sure, I think, something um, not just myself, but I think the uh, the founders of UFF Sports want to get going between now and the end of the year, right? And I think we're all, all eyes are on the, the AF, uh, AFL, I guess, <laughs> the, the abbreviation there with the Football League, Football Legends League. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we're kind of monitoring what Andy and our, our pals over at the football side of things are doing because we want to do something similar for Legends League. I mean, I think it would be really cool to be able to draft. Some people were talking about it in the Telegram chat the other day about drafting MJ or drafting Kobe or drafting Shaq or Bill Russell or Will Chamberlain, right? It would be kind of cool to get those kinds of players involved in the UFF ecosystem. Um, certainly, uh, Kevin Liu as well is our head of uh, women's basketball. And Kevin and I have been working on getting that off the ground as well. And He's posted kind of a, a skeleton outline, let's say, of what scoring would look like and what rosters would look like. So hopefully when the, uh, when the franchise auction for that gets going as well, that's another opportunity for people to get involved in the, the, the word you used, I think, was ecosystem, right, of basketball, the community of basketball here for UFF. And then certainly um, a college basketball league, I think, is something we want to get going by the next college season because... Of course, it's January now, and March Madness is uh, just right around the corner. So we have some 
exciting things for the UFBA as we lead into March Madness because you know a lot of people want to be able to draft players and futures auctions and so on. So that's something that's coming out very very soon, and uh, hopefully a college basketball league on the near horizon as well. Now, show before you make a couple of announcements that you want to make. I did have another question for you because you, sure. you came on sort of a little bit later in the in the in the season. Um, and I, if I, you know, I think we're really lucky to have you because you've been super involved in the telegram and you've, you know, sort of taken the bull immediately by the horns, which is, you know, great. Are there things that you were looking at from the league perspective when you joined that you wanted to fix? Are you happy with how everything's gone? Are there any sort of big picture ideas that you have for the future that you want to implement? That's a good question. I think one of the things we wanted to get done right away was certainly get those cap sheets back up and running. And I'm glad those have been done. And I think now that I'm kind of, I've kind of been doing a lot of the kind of day-to-day stuff myself. And now that we've been able to bring on a commissioner, bring on a scouting director, we've had interviews basically since I've started. I think I was announced like the day after New Year. So right, got 2022, right. 2022 pardon me, off to a great start. And so with, with additional admin, you know, getting all the functionality of the league back up and running, making sure uh, roster moves are reflected both on the UFF side of things and on fan tracks. Those are things that I think had, you know, not, like sometimes been, you know, maybe seven o'clock Eastern te- typically is the uh, time frame where games typically start in. And sometimes roster moves were always reflected by then. So anyways, I think we've gotten everything, I think, back up to speed. Uh, you launching the UFBA Today podcast, I think has been something we've been trying to get going for a long time. But you and I have messaged back and forth. So that honestly is a big part of it too. So it's kind of cool to be a part of the first uh, pilot episode, like you called it. Yeah, well, I mean, we had to have you on. You're uh, you're the big wig of basketball now. I mean, that's uh, you know the big mucker, as uh, as my Jewish community would would call you. Um, so, but yeah, I mean, I think all those things are important. And you know, whenever you're getting a league off the ground, there's going to be you know bumps and bruises and things that you have to figure out on the fly. Uh, but I think I speak for a lot of the people, and probably all the people in the league, when I say you know I'm appreciative of all the work that you've done because you did start pretty much just recently and you've immediately sort of hit the ground running. So I think that's great. And uh, thank you very much for all that show. And I know that you had a couple of people that you wanted to uh, welcome to the, to the league and to the ecosystem as, as now that we're going to just call it that. Oh, yeah, I, I like that word. I think we're going to stick with that ecosystem word. Yeah. I wanted to officially say, I mentioned it kind of alluded to it before, but um, we did complete interviews for the commissioner uh, commissioner position and for uh, the scouting director position. So uh, Keshav Sharma is going to be our new commissioner. He's going to be, I guess this is his official introduction. We're going to send out a press release to all the owners and GMs like yourself, Jet, over the next, uh, in the next day or two. And then uh, I think next week, Monday, is when Keshav is going to kind of formally take over the, uh, you know, the administration of fan tracks and the UFF sports side of things from me. And then uh, on that other note, Danielli Franceschi, uh, is going to be our new scouting director, which is very exciting because I guess the scouting side of things has been something we hadn't gotten off the ground yet, uh, which, of course, is, is is integral and vital to whatever we all want to do next, right? I mean, March Madness, like I said, is right around the corner, and I think it's important to get uh, the scouting director in place so we can have our futures auctions and we can look ahead to the NBA draft and know which players are available. So on that note, Danielle and I have also agreed that the futures auction date for the UFBA this year for the 2022 and 2023 draft classes will be on Saturday, March 12th. So uh, the reasoning for that, I guess, is because on Sunday, March 13th is Selection Sunday, so we'll see the draw for the March Madness tournament, and then later that following week, uh, the actual tournament will start, right? So for the men's basketball tournament. So uh, the uh, again, the futures auction for the UFBA draft will be uh, Saturday, March 12th, 2022, and that'll basically encompass 60 players from the 2022 draft and 60 players from the 2023 draft, so that'll be a, a big thing for owners and GMs and scouts as well to get ready for um uh, kind of in the first couple weeks of march there yeah that's those are a couple of really massive announcements for the league uh in, in terms of personnel and dates so uh you know make sure that you are paying close attention to this podcast in this show because you're going to get big first announcements here 
Uh, I'm going to make sure of that. No announcements will go without my knowing. I'm going to be in charge of all those things. All the breaking news is going to happen here. Damn it. I am. I'm determined. Uh, but so I'm assuming Danielle is going to be getting a lot of questions in the next couple of weeks on Telegram about how the scout scouting is going to work. Uh, when when is everybody going to be made sort of available for GMs and teams to connect with them? Yeah, it's basically as soon as uh, Danielle and Keshav are kind of formally introduced. I think I think basically on Monday uh, next week, I think they'll be able to be able to field questions as soon as humanly possible. Um, Danielle and I are, are meeting this week. We're going to put together kind of our uh, our list of uh, prospects that we can make available to to the GMs and the owners over the next couple of weeks as well, and get some information out there for anyone who's interested in becoming a scout as well, right? Because I know a lot of the franchises have scouts affiliated with them from other sports but there might be people out there who only want to do basketball so if that's the case yeah there's a lot of opportunities for people to get involved and Danielli and both both him and Keisha as commissioner will be uh, fielding a lot of questions but I'll be there to help them out just in case they I need any backup so you're just not going to disappear into the void and then you know, no. no longer respond <laughs> on telegram or anything like that okay we don't have to worry about that uh so just talking about uh, Keshav and Danielli, what stood out to you with each of them in terms of how they ultimately got the position? Why are they the right people for the job? Sure. So Keshav, I've known for uh, a number of years. I think we've known each other for about 10 to 12 years now. Gosh, I don't even remember how long it's been, but he is uh, one of the most passionate basketball fans I know, and he is a uh, a lot of uh, a lot of love and care for the game, just like everyone else in the league. So I feel like he'll he'll fit right in, and he's very detail oriented, which of course, when it comes to the the commissioner's position, is is uh, absolutely a must, right? When it comes to changing roster moves and uh, you know being able to send guys up and down from the minors to the active roster and all these different things, answering minutia questions on the rule book, which are are all very important things. So I have uh, the utmost confidence he'll be able to uh, tackle that in a in a great manner and. Daniele, same goes for him too, by, by all means. Uh, he and I have uh, worked together for a number of years as well. But uh, Daniele is, I think, one of the most passionate college basketball fans that are out there, right? I think he, he loves watching the NCAA. He watches, he watches every level of college basketball from the top schools like Duke and Villanova and Gonzaga and so on, all the way down to like the D3 schools, it feels like. So I couldn't really think of a better person suited to uh, take the reins on scouting because it means uh, all of the GMs, the owners, the scouts will get, I think, the most detailed information when it comes to uh, all the men's basketball college prospects. Not just, I guess, in the NCAA, but all the international prospects as well, right? So Danielli will be a good fit for that, I think, too. I'm going to have to come up with some really obscure prospects to try to stump him. <laughs> when we have him on the show, sure? we're going to have to play some sort of, some sort of Jeopardy-based game and see how good he really is. That's going to be the ultimate test, is how obscure of a prospect can he name. Uh, but we're definitely excited to have both of them uh, joining the league, and it should be great. And obviously, the uh, the auction coming up on March 12th, which is, again, a Saturday, uh, the Futures Auction, that should be really, really fun, a big part of the league. Um, and we're going to talk a lot more about that as it approaches. Um, so we got about uh, a little less than two months before that happens. Today is uh, the 19th of January, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, so lots of good things to look forward to. And show before I let you go and we wrap up here, uh, I do have a final question for you. And that is, if we could get any active player to have an NFT licensing agreement with UFBA, Ooh. Who would you want it to be? That's a great question. You know what? I am going to be, I know it'd be really easy to say like Giannis or Joel Embiid or I don't know, Devin Booker or something. I think I might, I'm going to be a homer. You can see my hats in the background. I'm going to be a massive homer. I would kill for a Fred Van Vliet NFT. Ooh, a baby. Sign me up for a FVV bet on yourself NFT. That would probably be the catch race too. You know, like the NFTs all have words or phrases associated with right. them. It'd be bet on yourself and it'd be Fred Van Vliet for the Toronto Raptors. I, I like it. I feel like the, the, you know what? Everybody can go and have, you know, the Giannis and the Durant's and stuff like that. Like we want the guys who are actually like passionate about it and going to promote the, like Kevin Durant has like 50 products he promotes. Like 
Fred Van Vliet would be all over this. You'd be promoting the hell out of it. I agree. Yeah, Fred Van Vliet is one of my. He's one of my favorite players, not just because he is super talented, but also because he is. You know, he does things like scholarships here he recently announced like a scholarship for black and indigenous students in in a, with a local university here in toronto uh he has a podcast where he highlights local businesses like he's very passionate about the things he gets involved in so uh here that's the bucket list that's all like the white whale for nfts for me is getting fred van Vliet involved i i think it's a great answer and you know what i appreciate that it's a unique answer too uh and i'm sure that you've already voted a million times for fred van Vliet to make the all-star game oh yes yeah, absolutely. And <laughs> right. I know you said you're well, from Boston, uh, Jet. I uh, I yeah. didn't. I did not vote for the Jason Tatum's, Jalen Browns of the world. I did vote for the uh, Pascal Siakams and Fred Van Vliet's of the world. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, you know what? Don't apologize, honestly. And I'm going to end up talking about this plenty on the show. The Celtics don't deserve any accolades or anything like that. They they. <laughs> this is the most miserable Celtics team of my 30 years plus as a fan. It's uh, it's not been enjoyable. It's been a terrible slog, and frankly, the team deserves no accolades whatsoever. So I have no problem with you not voting for anybody. You know, everybody should not vote for any Celtics. That's the only way we're going to spur actual change going on in Boston. It's true. You know what? Hey, there are some good players there, but uh, it it might take a couple more years before we see uh, another championship a la uh, 2008. Yeah, it's already been... It's been too long. We, we're not patient here in Boston when it comes to the championship show. We, we expect them every season, and anything less than that is considered a massive disappointment. So, you know, I'm reeling from the Patriots getting their asses kicked. Uh, the Bruins, you know, are starting to play a little bit better. Red Sox lost in the ALCS, and the Celtics give me literally a nightly headache and have taken years off my life. So they're my favorite team. Uh, if I did have a tattoo, which I don't, it would be of the Celtics. but. God help me, I hate this team this year. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, I'll, I'll say this, Jet. Uh, as a Toronto sports fan who has seen the Leafs lose to the Bruins and the Jays lose to the Red Sox uh, more times than I can humanly count, I uh, don't have too much sympathy for you. <laughs> no, you shouldn't. It's, that's fine. You shouldn't have. Nobody has, <laughs> nobody has any sympathy for Boston sports fans. You know, I, when I went away to college, when I went to Oregon, it was like I was persona non grata because I was, you know, I was the, that was right. the... the the Tom Brady era and you know the Celtics were were ripping off uh the conference titles and you know the Red Sox were winning world it was just like I, I mean it was great you know that's that's where you want people to hate you is because you're winning and everything but now it's just like now I'm just getting kicked while I'm down you know all the teams are this is this is for for Boston a team losing in the ALCS a team losing in the second round of the playoffs in the Bruins a team uh that made the playoffs in the Celtics and a team losing in the playoffs in the Patriots that's considered horrible. You know, this is this is like the dark days. You know, for other cities, this is fantastic. But no, here it's terrible. You know, there's we haven't seen the sun in in months, as far as I'm concerned. Look, if the Raptors make the play-in tournament this year, I think the entire city, considering they played in Tampa all of last season, I think this entire city will rejoice. So we'll take what we can get. Yeah, and all you have the best you have the best story of the season in that the the Raptor mascot is is now, you know, officially has <laughs> right. real estate in Devin Booker's head. So, I mean, that's been my favorite aspect of the season. The Raptors at least play hard. I give them credit. The, the Celtics, God, I don't remember the last time that they played four quarters of a basketball game. Yeah, I'll I'll look forward. Maybe maybe we can uh, come on again when the Raptors and Celtics play and we can uh, relitigate this conversation then. I'm in, and I would love to get the Raptor mascot on as a guest. I know he's a hot commodity right now. Maybe we can get an NFT out of him too. Long live the uh, the Raptors mascot. Now, forgive me, show. I you know I'm a big NBA fan, but I don't know the names of every mascot. Does the Raptor mascot have a name? No, I, I, he actually is just called the Raptor. That's literally it. It's okay. just the Raptor. I respect that. There, there is like another. There is another uh, like another like quote unquote younger. Raptor that I think they called Stripes for a couple of years, but the guy who's oh, no. been doing it since day one in the 90s, uh, it's the same guy under that costume, and he's been doing it, and the Raptor is his name, yeah. You know what? Long live the Raptor. Good good on you, Raptor. <laughs> uh, so, I appreciate your time, show. Thank you so much. Thanks for all the work you do, and we'll definitely talk to you. We'll have you on plenty of times when the season's over. Yeah, thanks, Jed. I look forward to it. And don't forget, yeah, Saturday, March 12th, the Futures Auction, next big date. 
in the UFBA calendar. All right, everybody, remember to circle that date on your calendar. And uh, before I leave you with this uh, pilot premiere episode of the show, I have an announcement of my own and a, a, a breaking, shocking announcement is that my team, the Metaverse Mambas, officially have a logo. Uh, we have been logoless for all of the season, embarrassingly so. You know, we just have that little jersey icon, uh, which it's frankly, you know, that's that's not that's not ideal. It's like the equivalent of having the egg on Twitter. Uh, but we do have a logo now. Um, can we pull that up, guys? Can we uh, can we show the the beautiful Metaverse Mambas logo or is it not gonna? Is it not gonna pop up? I know it was. I sent it to everybody last minute, so I don't know if we're gonna see it or not. Uh, I'm gonna go off the assumption that I am frozen, and therefore the logo is not gonna be there. So if it's not, that's fine. If it is up, which I am now getting word in my ear that it is, observe the beauty. Wait, which I think this is the direction I should be pointing in. If not, I'm going to do a one take here too. I know we're going to just put this all in there. I don't mind looking like an idiot. That's totally fine. It's either here or it's here. And it's beautiful. Metaverse Mambas have a logo. And now all we need is Zion Williamson to lose 60 or so pounds, fix his foot, and for COVID to no longer be an issue. And then we will be rising to the top like a phoenix. Like a metaverse Mamba Phoenix. But, you know, logo was the first step. I'm so glad we have one. Shout out to my co owner, Zach Trebo, for getting all of that organized. Again, just just a beautiful, beautiful logo. I would say the best logo in the league. And that's coming from a completely non biased perspective. But that's going to do it for us here on the first episode of UFBA today. I hope everybody enjoyed it and is looking forward to the rest of the season and all these shows. Please, again, if you want to come on the show, telegram me, Jet Stryer. I'm right there, uh, just either in, in the main chat or privately DM me and say you want to come on. We'll work it out. We will figure out a time. And everybody, I would love to see every team represented at some point this season. Um, and if there's anything you want me to talk about, on the show, you know, this is not, I'm not going to make every single decision. I'd love to hear from you. What do you want me to talk about? What specific teams, what specific rules, any issues, any grievances, any, any dirt you want to throw at other teams? I'm all for whatever. It's, a, it's you know, this is, this is going to be fun. This is an open book. Nothing is off limits. And um, yeah, I'm really excited to continue the rest of the season. Uh, I do want to note that this is a production of UFFS and the Ultimate Fantasy Sports Network. We are the UFBA today. We are here, and we are going to dominate the all the other podcasts, all the other YouTube shows from the other leagues. They will become irrelevant in the wake of this show. So thanks for listening, everybody, and I will talk to you next week. See ya. Uh-huh.